الرحيم <تصفيق> وما آتاكم الرسول فخذوه وما نهاكم عنه فانتهوا صدق الله العظيم سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي درش عبد الله respected brothers respected elders mothers and sisters listening at home as mentioned in our previous sessions of durus hadith the assassin who plot to murder sayyidina umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an he was the slave of hazrat mughira radiyallahu ta'ala an and the name of the slave was abu lu'lu the persian slave Ulama have mentioned that the final fate of Abu Lu'lu was when he was surrounded by the companions what he did was he killed himself committed suicide he knew definitely that he will be killed because of the laws of retribution qisas and therefore he committed suicide but some of the muslim historians have also mentioned that although abu lu'lu was the key man who stabbed sayyidina umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an but there were also two other individuals who had some information of this conspiracy that was about to take place aliyazu billah to take out or to murder to assassinate the great khalifa hazrat umar ibn al khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an some of the muslim historians like tabakat ibn sa'ad he has mentioned that you had two other individuals and the story goes as abu lu'lu what he did was he with his own hand made this dagger and it is mentioned that this dagger was a two-headed dagger not an ordinary weapon but rather a very lethal weapon and when i say two-headed dagger that would mean that the handle is in the middle and the two sides of it would have a blade and even the blades were dipped into a portion of poison so if he was to stab someone not only would he receive a very deep wound wound a cut straight through but then he would die immediately because of the poison allahu akbar all was planned when he made this dagger the first man he showed this dagger to was a person whose name was hormuzan do brothers recall hormuzan hormuzan was one of the nobles of persia and he was caught came as a prisoner when he looked at the character of umar ibn al khattab and the justice of umar ibn al khattab this man embraced islam now wallahu alam only allah knows of his iman but the dagger was first shown to hormuzan and he said to hormuzan that hormuzan what do you think of this dagger So Hormuzan said that in my opinion if you were to attack anyone with this dagger you would kill him immediately and Abu Lu'lu started to laugh Now ulama have mentioned these are Muslim historians they have said that Abu Lu'lu was also a Persian and Hormuzan was also a a Persian 
And these were foreigners and slaves that had taken up residence in the city of Madinatul Munawwara. Brothers, recall that this was not something that Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an wanted. This was never his desire. It was because of the seniority of some of the companions, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab gave permission. So Hurmuzan, anyway, he had embraced Islam, he had uh, declared to the Shahada, he uttered the kalima la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah in front of a group of Muslims. And therefore he was given permission to stay in Madinatul Munawwara. Ulama have mentioned that Hormuzan and another man whose name was Junaifa, Junaifa, both of them knew that Abu Lu'lu had this evil intention, aliyazu billah, to assassinate Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, but they remain silent about it. So they are also guilty. Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr. Now this is a narration that is narrated by Tabaqat ibn Sa'ad, another great Muslim historian. He says that the son of Abu Bakr Siddiq, Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman had once bumped into Abu Lu'lu, and Abu Lu'lu was in the, in the company of uh, Junaifa and also Hormuzan. And so when he bumped into Abu Lu'lu, the dagger fell on the ground. Now this was not a, a usual dagger, something very different. Handmade, he himself made that dagger. So Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr saw this dagger, and because it was cut in a very different way, Abu Lu'lu very quickly went down to pick the dagger up, and he put it away. But Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr had seen the dagger. Later on, when Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was attacked and stabbed, and when Abdul Rahman saw the dagger, the weapon, the lethal weapon, or in according to some of the narration, it is said that someone had described the weapon in front of Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr. So you have two narrations. So he said, this is the same dagger that I had seen in the hands of Abu Lu'lu. And with Abu Lu'lu, you also had Hurmuzan and Junaifa. So the two were also with him. Now it is said that, when Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr was narrating this story, this incident, in front of him was the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, whose name was Ubaidullah ibn Umar. Now you have two individuals, remember. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an had a son whose name was Abdullah, and another son whose name was Ubaidullah. And he had three children who were named Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman. So you had Abdullah and you had Ubaidullah. So this was Ubaidullah. When Ubaidullah heard what Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr had to say, he went close to Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr and he wanted the confirmation and he said, Are you sure that this is what you had seen with your own eyes? So Abdul Rahman said, I can confirm that. That this is the same dagger which I saw in the hands of Abu Lu'lu and with Abu Lu'lu was Hurmuzan and Junaifa. And this is the weapon by which Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and has been stabbed. Allahu Akbar, Ubaidullah, the deep love, not only because that uh, it was that fatherly love, they were loyal to the Khulafa, to the Khilafat. And Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala an, immediately he stood up with a sword and he wanted to take Qisas, the laws of retribution. Qisas, Al-Aynu bil ain Wal-Anfu bil anf If you kill someone, what do you do? You kill him. Now, oh, just today I was listening to the radio, Allahu Akbar, three youth, three youth killed a very brutally a disabled man. A disabled man. And a 16-year-old boy or a 17-year-old boy. And he got 15 years. And what is 15 years? In 7, 8 years he'll be out. Because sometimes they even count the day and night as two days. And the solicitor was saying that, oh, no sympathy was shown to a very young child who's only 17. Can you imagine? 
a disabled man was killed brutally. In fact, in such a way that to humiliate him even worse, Aliyazu Billah, they had pulled down his trousers, kapre nikal liye the, nanga kar diya tha, disabled aadmi. Now, can you imagine, my respected brothers, if the laws of Islam were implemented and immediately these three were beheaded and the death sentence immediately killed, do you think that they would, the, the, the rate of crimes would increase? Rate of crimes would increase? And this would be done publicly. It would be a warning to everyone, to all of the citizens. And this is the beauty of Islam and the laws of Islam. Allah says, I am merciful or are you merciful? Okay. Who is merciful? Is insan merciful or is Allah merciful? And I am giving you the command, the laws, the qisas, the laws of retribution. The level of our education, 68,000 pupils sky school every day in England. Kitne? 68,000 students sky from school Every day. Huh? Allahu Akbar. <coughs> How is that possible? Look at our system of madrasa. For the first time, Sheikh Javid is sitting in front of me. MashaAllah. You dare bunk his madrasa and you'll find out. And sky from his madrasa. But 68,000. La ilaha illallah. Huh? And when the group came to me, they said to me that, Oh, why do women dress up like how they dress up? And I said, well... Uh, Islam wishes to curtail adultery, fornication, teenage pregnancy, incest, rape, child abuse, divorce, and all the filth which are prevalent in the Western society. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us instructions of how to dress up. Uh, and the first command is that if you see a woman, put your eyes down. And the same command goes to the lady. Because clothes are a great attraction. How you dress up. Allahu Akbar, clothes have the power to arouse the opposite, the opposite gender, the opposite sex. Your clothes have that power. And so she understood. I said, I don't have time to explain this to you. But all of the laws of Sharia are beautiful. Of course. So immediately, Ubaidullah stood up. Now he was also the son. But we need to understand, he would have done that, or anyone would have done that, in the case of a great Khalifa being murdered or assassinated. And so he took the sword and quickly went out to look for Hormuzan and Junaifa. Junaifa or Juhaifa, I can't recall how it's pronounced. But the two individuals... And immediately Ubaidullah came to them and he killed uh, Hormuzan and also Junaifa. Both of them were killed and then he came to Masjid Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said, I have taken Qisas. In fact, the, the atmosphere in Madinatul Munawwara at that time was such because Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab disapproved and he did not want the slaves, foreign slaves to live in Medina. And he did not want uh, other kuffar also to settle around Madinatul Munawwara. Sahabai Kiram Ajma'een were very angered. And there was a possibility that some of them even wished to kill all of the slaves in Madinatul Munawwara at that time. But obviously that was incorrect according to the Sharia, the laws of the Quran and Sunnah. So control was taken. Only three people were killed. In fact, Abu Lu'lu killed himself. And Hurmuzan and Junaifa were killed by Hazrat Ubaidullah ibn Umar. So this is one narration, Wallahu Alam. I have just narrated to you what uh, one great Muslim historian has mentioned, which, can, which is recorded in the Tabaqat of Ibn Sa'ad, Rahmatullah alayhi. Subhanallah al-Azim. Now the level of Iman for Hurmuzan or even Junaifa, that is in the ilm of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How sincere they were. Were they part of this conspiracy uh, which was taken at hand by Abu Lu'lu? He himself came forward and attacked in the early seconds after Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab had said his takbir-e-tahreema for Fajr Salah. Immediately, the minute he said Allahu Akbar, 
and he was about to say Alhamdulillah, that is the time this man came in front of Umar ibn al-Khattab and started stabbing Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. Now going back to the incident, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, once he was attacked by Abu Lu'lu, he fell to the ground. Immediately some of the companions lifted up Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, and he was taken to his room, his residence, his chamber where he was. We need to understand that all of the houses of the companions are now in the main section of Masjid Nabwi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Madinatul Munawwara at that time was not so big, even the extension of Masjid Nabwi. Masjid Nabwi was not, not very big at all. In fact, uh, Masjid Umar is slightly bigger. Sahan to bahad bariti. Sahan bahad bariti. But the Masjid itself was not as big. So we are talking about the Khilafat of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. He was taken, Allahu Akbar, and some of the companions who went to visit Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an in his room, they say that even after this, after receiving painful wounds to the body, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an's focus was only upon the ummah, the unity of the ummah. And he would lift up his hands and make dua for the ummah that, Ya Allah, let no one divide the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Even in that condition, he was not bothered about himself, about his physical conditions. He would lift up his hands, the companions would say, and continuously praying for the ummah. That no one should take advantage of this. No one must divide the ummah. No one must divide the ummah. This was the focus of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an in the last few hours or the last days of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. Some of the companions came and they greeted Amir al muminin and they said, Amir al muminin it would be nice if you were to select a khalifa or a successor, someone who you feel holds that position to become the khalifa after you. Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an did not respond and he remained silent for a bit contemplating what to do and he said that during the time of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away Rasulullah did not appoint anyone as his khalifa or anyone as his successor Rasulullah did not appoint Abu Bakr Siddiq as his successor Muhaddisin have mentioned why because it was so obvious the companions knew this was something straightforward for them that who can be the Khalifa after Rasulullah other than Abu Bakr Siddiq in fact it was so obvious in the ranks of the companions that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam did not even feel the need of writing this down on a piece of paper or he did not even say it to any of the companions nor did he mention it to Ali radiallahu ta'ala an, nor to Umar ibn al-Khattab and not even to Abu Bakr Siddiq. Who can take the position of Abu Bakr Siddiq? Subhanallah al-Azim. Baat sunni ayya ni? How my respected brothers? Now Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he was out of Madinatul Munawwara, the only person who could stand on the musalla of Rasulullah was who? Abu Bakr Siddiq. So he was going to be the Khalifa. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had not mentioned the name of anyone who was to be the successor after him because it was very obvious. Mm-hmm. Now after the demise of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam everyone agreed upon Abu Bakr Siddiq and we've covered that. Even the slight delay that came from some of the companions there was another reason we have covered that. Mm-hmm. During the Khilafat of Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an the last few days of Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an, he himself had selected Umar ibn al-Khattab as his successor. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not choose Abu Bakr Siddiq, but Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an had selected Umar ibn al-Khattab. And he made sure that none are to become, uh, uh, none are given khilafat but to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. For Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq knew there was no one strong-minded in Madinatul Munawwara at that time than Umar ibn al-Khattab. Umar ibn al-Khattab 
was just the perfect man huh? and the Khilafat suited him at that time. No one else could have been the Khalifa. A man who was ready for all situations. Mm. Allahu Akbar. And everyone agreed upon the Khilafat yeah. of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. Everyone did bay'ah, uh, they swore allegiance to Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. Now, what is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala to do? Who is he going to select as a Khalifa? Muhaddisin have mentioned that Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and the genius that he was. Now we need to understand that the level of Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was so high, was so high, they were right on top, that no one could even dare to think that we can become uh, khulafa uh, on top and above Abu Bakr Siddiq and Umar radiallahu ta'ala an. So there was never this concern and worry that somebody else would have taken their position because they were right on top. These were individuals who were very, very close to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But after Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, again, the levels of the Sahabai kiram ajma'een was quite similar. So it was important that the right decision has to be made. This was a difficult moment. Who is going to become a Khalifa? Now subhanallah, again Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an came with this unprecedented system. Huh? A system of shura. And he said that I will select the council of six. Kitne? The council of six. And the next Khalifa will be one from the six. Who are the council of six? By Hazrat Asman radiallahu ta'ala. And then Hazrat Ali. And then Hazrat Talha. And then Abu Bakr Bi. Huh? No. Hazrat Zubair. Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf and Hazrat Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu ta'ala. Now we need to remember that there was another one from Ahadi Mubashara, Ashari Mubashara, who Hazrat Umar did not include, though he was one of the senior companions. He was Hazrat Sa'id. Ashari Mubashara me dohe. Ek he Sa'ado Sa'id. One is Sa'ad and one is Sa'id. But Hazrat Sa'id was not included. Why was he not included? Ulama have mentioned because he was from the same tribe of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He was from the tribe of Adi. Hazrat Umar wanted to make sure that everything was done with complete justice. Uh, that he was not biased. He did not include Hazrat Sa'id who was even the right candidate for Khilafat. There was no question. These were Ashari Mubashara. But because he was from the same tribe, Hazrat Umar and Hazrat Sa'id were from the tribe of Adi, he did not include Hazrat Adi. Allahu Akbar. And he said that this is the council of six, from the six, one will be the Khalifa. And now Allahu Akbar, whilst in his room, he's giving instructions. Not only does he select and appoint the council of six, but he even explains to them the procedure of how the selection must be made. Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anfas called all of the senior companions and all of the six, the council of six were there. And he said that I am going to put the six of you in one house. And you will remain there from Fajr to Fajr. And a time of three days is given to you. A time period of how many days? Three days is given to you. Let not the fourth day come, but you must have appointed a Khalifa amongst you. So the maximum time I give you is how many days? Three days. Otherwise, Allahu Akbar, there is a possibility that the enemies uh, could make fitna within the, the, the Muslim community of Madinatul Munawwara. So he said, I give you three days. And in the three days, you have to select one Amir. Sayyidina Umar then called his son, Abdullah ibn Umar. And he said that with the six in the house, there will only be one individual, and that is my son. Now, Abdullah ibn Umar was a great muhaddis. Remember that even he could be the candidate and he would qualify for khilafat. This was his reputation. Mm-hmm. 
But he was just sitting there as an advisor, making sure that everything was functioning in accordance to the wish of Umar ibn al-Khattab. So he is just to sit there and to monitor. He is not part of the six. So he said, my son Abdullah ibn Umar will be there to make sure and he'll tell me what is happening. Abdullah ibn Umar was someone who was very very close to his father. Mm-hmm. And another sahabi whose name is Hazrat al-Suhayb. Subhanallah, look at Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab. No shortcuts with him. Mm-hmm. Everything, Allahu Akbar, running and functioning properly. Mm-hmm. Even in that position that he's in, in, a, in a few hours or in a few days, he will leave this dunya. But how does he leave this dunya? And then he called Hazrat Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala an, and he said to Suhaib that Suhaib, the six senior companions are in the house. I am giving you the duty that from now I am not in that position to lead the Muslims for prayers. So you are the Imam of Masjid al Nabwi. You are the Imam of Masjid al Nabwi until a Khalifa has been selected. Again, decisions taken by the Khalifa. So that no one would say, oh he is the Khalifa, or he is the one, because he is leading the prayers, that there is a possibility Khilafat has been transferred. Everything was made very, very clear, that Suhaib, you are the Imam, until Khilafat has been organized. And then he even called Hazrat Abu Talha, and he said to Abu Talha, that I want a group of 70 to monitor that everything is functioning well. And then he called Hazrat Suhaib, he said, Suhaib, do me one favor. If the majority from the council of six agree on one person as a khalifa and there is a minority or for an example one individual or two individual individuals disagree with the decision that comes from the majority that is treason that is treason so I want you to personally execute the one or the two Look at the decision of Umar ibn al-Khattab. That if they go against the decision of the majority of the council of six, he knew for himself that this was not going to happen. These were not ordinary people. But these were the laws. He was setting it out. There was no messing with Umar ibn al-Khattab. And so he said, if there is one or even two who disagree, like in the time of Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, you had the, 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 the hypocrites who had said that Abu Bakr Siddiq does not qualify for Khilafat, it should go to Hazrat Ali. And then you had another group that were known as Shia. And Shia means those who have broken away from the main team of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'at. So he said, anyone who breaks away from the Council of Six and does not do bay'ah to that one appointed, then I want you to execute him. So Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala was not only an imam, but he was also the one with the sword. The one with the sword. Subhanallah al And again making things even more clear for the companions. He said, if for some reason, from the six, three have appointed one, and the other three have appointed another individual, and there is a tie, or there is a, a split vote. There is a tie or a split vote. Then what are the council of six to do? He even came with a, the solution for that. He said, then I will ask my son Abdullah ibn Umar to select the party which he wants. As Abdullah ibn Umar was a, a senior sahabi. He said, then I will ask my son Abdullah ibn Umar who he thinks would be the right person as the Khalifa, if the two parties can't come to a decision, then it will be the choice of Abdullah ibn Umar. But if the council of six still dis- disagree with my son, Abdullah ibn Umar, then I am saying, still the Khalifa of the Muslims, that in whichever team Abdul Rahman bin Auf is, that is the team who will select the Khalifa. So if you had three on one side and three on one side, if they don't like the opinion of Abdullah ibn Umar, then they look for Abdul Rahman bin Auf. In whichever team Abdul Rahman bin Auf is, whether it's Abdul Rahman bin Auf being selected or any of the other companions, that person, that individual will be the 
Khalifa. Itni baat sun maayir. Now the reason for that is Abdurrahman bin Auf was a very mature Sahabi, a man of great wisdom, a man of great knowledge. Uh, this man was an advisor for all of the companions, even Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an, and even in the battlefield he was there everywhere. If you recall when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an wanted to go and participate in the battle of Qadisiya, it was Abdul Rahman bin Auf who said, no, I will not allow. And everyone had to agree to Hazrat Abdul Rahman bin Auf because Hazrat Sa'ad ibn Waqas radiallahu ta'ala an was to take the place of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. So he said wherever Abdul Rahman bin Auf is, he will be the Khalifa. Subhanallah al my respected brothers, the final decision was that all of them agreed upon one individual and that individual is Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Now we have to be very, very careful. There are many, many such narrations and when we read books, we have to be very, very careful. You will find uh, words such as, Oh, Hazrat Ali did not select Hazrat Uthman and there was a fight between the companions and they wanted Hazrat Ali to come but then all of them grouped up against Hazrat Ali and by force they selected Hazrat Uthman and it was a difficult decision. And you will find all of these stories, uh, Allahu Akbar, which has no basis in Islam. Uh, it is all false and untrue. So we have to be very, very careful. It was agreed by all of the companions that the Khalifa will be Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala. Now we go to some of the last moments of the life of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Respected brothers, Hazrat Ibn Abbas mm-hmm. radiallahu ta'ala an says that I entered the room of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an where Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was resting his bedding um, and when he saw Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an he greeted Ibn Abbas and Ibn Abbas came he says that when I saw the face of Umar radiallahu ta'ala an the only thing what I could describe him with is nur his face was full of nur and when I greeted him I said to him receive glad tidings of Jannah O Amirul Mu'mineen these are the words of Ibn Abbas he says when I saw him I said receive the glad tidings of Jannah O Amirul Mu'mineen you supported Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when many turned away from him many did not have the power at that time to give that pillar of support to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You embraced Islam when many disbelieved. The first batch of mu'mineen from the muhajireen, Hazrat Umar was one of them. Uh, the first group, the first batch of people, the early Muslims, Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was one of them. And he said that, receive the glad tidings of Jannah, for Allah's Nabi had asked for your iman. And he said, O Amirul Mu'mineen, receive the glad tidings of Jannah. For you strove in jihad with Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when many turned away from him. And he said to Amirul Mu'mineen that receive the glad tidings of Jannah. Allah's Nabi was pleased with you. And he said, Allah is pleased with you that Allah has given you the status of shahadat. Allahu Akbar. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an looked at Ibn Abbas and called him and he said to Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas I can't hear you, can you repeat what you are saying? Allah. And Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an again repeated the words what he had said and then Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an turned on the side and he said to Ibn Abbas, he said Ibn Abbas what you have mentioned it is nothing but the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But let me tell you Ibn Abbas Despite all of the virtue that you have mentioned, I still fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am still scared. I don't know what is the fate and what will happen to Umar ibn al-Khattab. Or Ibn Abbas, can you tell me what will happen to me when I'm in the grave? This is Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. And he said to Ibn Abbas that, Ibn Abbas, you are my witness. If I could ransom myself and my soul by giving gold and silver in the path of Allah, I would even do that. But I tell you the truth, 
with what you have mentioned, I know that Allah is Beniyaz, Allah is Samad, that Allah is totally independent. Or Ibn Abbas, pray for me, I don't know what will happen to me. Look at the level of Iman. How my respected brothers. A man who was guaranteed Jannat, not just once, but in many occasions of the life of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Many times. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Umar fil jannah, Umar fil jannah, Umar fil jannah, Umar is in jannah, Umar is in jannah. Allahu Akbar. The very last incident is mentioned by Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. And Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an, the Khalifa, he highlights for us those moments uh, how Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an left this dunya. And he said that, I entered the hujra, the room of Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, and I saw that Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was resting on the thighs or the laps of his son, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala. And so that Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an entered and he greeted, and he said, Wa alaykum salam to Hazrat Uthman, and he said to his son Abdullah, that Abdullah, I want you to put my head down on the ground and I want you to turn my cheeks to the ground Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala and said to his father oh father what is the difference you are resting on my lap this is comfortable for you what is the difference if I put your head down on the ground or if it is on my lap and he knew exactly what the father wanted and so Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an looked at his son Abdullah ibn Umar and he said obey your father obey. what did he say? Obey. Obey. obey your father when he said obey your father Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was there very slowly Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala an put the head of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an on the ground and then it is said that Hazrat Osman was also there. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was um, wiping his face on the dust that was there on the ground. And he was moving it from right to left and he was saying, Woe to Umar if Allah does not forgive him. Woe to Umar if Allah does not forgive him. This was the humility. This was how humble Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an was. This was the fear that Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an had. He did not want to die on the lap, but he died on the ground with the cheeks facing the ground and saying that, O oh, Uthman, O oh, Abdullah ibn Umar, only if Allah is pleased with me, uh, Umar has everything. But woe to Umar if Allah is not pleased with him. And this is what he was saying. And it is said that he closed his eyes and the ruh, the soul, departed the body of Amr ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. This was the demise of this great giant in Islam, Amr ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. And what a great man he was, my respected brothers. Ulama have mentioned that ghusl was given to him. He was also given kafan, janaza namaz was also prayed. The reason why a lot of people explain that is uh, it is known that a martyr, a shaheed is not given ghusl. Uh, we have to understand the masail. If the martyr dies in the battlefield or immediately he has passed away, then obviously ghusl is not given to him. But for some time, uh, a time duration before his demise, if he was to stay alive, even for one hour or for two hours, then the fuqaha have mentioned that ghusl is given to him and he will also be given the kafan, he will be shrouded and janaza namaz will also be performed. So Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an lived for a few days and then when he passed away it is said that the man who was to perform the janaza namaz was the same man who was appointed by Umar ibn al-Khattab as the imam for masjid al-Nabwi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for the few days until the khalifa was selected. So it was Hazrat Suhaib radiallahu ta'ala an. Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an passed away 
on the 26th or according to some of the narration the 27th of Zil Hijjah 23 years after Hijri it was a Wednesday he passed away Hazrat Amir Mu'awiyah radiallahu ta'ala an would say that Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed away at the age of 63 Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq passed away at the age of 63 Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an passed away at the age of 63 this was the love that this company had and Allahu Akbar the love they had for Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they stayed together in this dunya and they will stay together in alam barzakh and they stay together even in Jannah subhanallah it is said that the Khilafat was for more than ten and a half years kitni Khilafat for more than ten and a half years subhanallah it is said that the people who uh, entered the grave of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an was Hazrat Uthman Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar Hazrat Suhaib and Hazrat Sa'id these were the four individuals who entered the Qabr Mubarak of Hazrat Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an when they were lowering down the auspicious body of Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an and we need to understand that this is very very close to Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq and also Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now during the time of uh, uh, Walid ibn Abdul Malik who was one of the Umayyad Khalifa um, the, the graves of uh, the Khulafai Rashidin had collapsed and so he instructed that the, the graves must be rebuilt again and so when they were uh, building the graves of the Khulafai Rashidin it is said that um, one foot was exposed from the grave and some of the people that were there they feared and they said that this could be the foot of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam just one foot because it was so close the graves are so close and it was Hazrat Urwa radiallahu ta'ala an that came and he looked perhaps at the size of the foot and he said no no I know that this is the foot and the body of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an Allahu Akbar so there is no question we have the enemies of Islam who at times say that the only one in the Rawza Mubarak is Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there is no Abu Bakr there and there is no Umar there aliyazu billah again yasab gobar fashani hai this is all uh, Shia uh, jahalat and rubbish uh, nonsense what they speak mm-hmm. that they say that there is no Abu Bakr Siddiq there and there is no Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and all of the Muslim historians have mentioned that the closest to the body of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq mm-hmm. and Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala and that is why Hazrat Aisha says that every time I, I go in my hujra to give salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Khulafai Rashidin I do parda huh? before she was not doing parda why because she, the one who, who are resting there one was the husband and one was the father Ola Mahram and so when Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an came into that chamber the Rawza every time she went inside she would do parda and greet all of the companions subhanallah ladeem this is the end of uh, Sayyidina Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an the love that Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an had for Hazrat Umar it is said that he stood on the, the cover of Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala an and he said that I would love to meet my Allah with the deeds of Umar ibn al-Khattab Allahu Akbar <laughs> I would love to meet my Allah with the a'mal with the good deeds of Umar ibn al-Khattab who is saying this? Hazrat, Hazrat Ali mm-hmm. Hazrat Ali dearly loved Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq mm-hmm. and Hazrat Umar mm-hmm. and Hazrat Ali dearly loved Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala in fact Hazrat Ali said while standing at the cover Mubarak of Khulafai Rashidin and Hazrat Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he said that I knew that the three will always be together because of what Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would always say in his lifetime that I am going with me is Abu Bakr and Umar 
that I went there with me is Abu Bakr and Umar. I can see this and also Abu Bakr and Umar can see this. Every time the name of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's auspicious name was mentioned, he would also mention Hazrat Abu Bakr and Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala. Allahu Akbar. Uh, this is the end of the Khilafat of this great individual, Hazrat Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala. An. Respected brothers, what we have mentioned, uh, this has been the research from great, great books, great Muslim historians, reputed books, but even then, if there have been some mistakes, uh, mistakes are from my own shortcomings and my own deficiencies. And what we have said is the sheer mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. May Allah accept our seerah and the khilafat of Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an. And inshallah very soon uh, we will start the khilafat of Hazrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala an. Again, uh, a glorious khilafat of Hazrat Uthman and Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala an. What I want the brothers to do is promote our dars and invite people so they can come and they understand the seerah and the khilafat of the Khulafai Rashidin. This is very very important. If we know our history, Alhamdulillah, the level of Iman will always be firm and we will have the love of companions. And when you have the love of the companions, that would mean you have the love of Rasulullah. And when you have the love of Rasulullah, that means you have the love of Quran. And when you have the love of Quran, that means you have the love of Allah. And when you have the love of Allah, uh, where will you end up? In Jannah. In Jannah al-Firdaus. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala sayyid al-mursaleen. Allahumma taqabbal minna wa tub alayna inna kant al-tawwabu al-raheem. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Ya Allah, ya Rahman, ya Raheem. یا اللہ خلفاء راشدین کے درجات کو بلند فرما صحابہ کرام اجمعین کے درجات کو بلند فرما اللہ ہمیں محبت دے صحابہ کرام اجمعین کی اللہ جو کچھ ہم نے بولا پرا سنا اللہ اس کو قبول فرما اللہ جو غلطی ہو گئی اللہ اس کی معافی چاہتے ہیں ہم تو کمزور ہے اللہ ہم نے بہت ساری غلطیاں کی اللہ تو ہی غلطی سے پاک ہے اللہ تو ہمیں معاف فرما دے اللہ تو ہمیں معاف فرما دے اللہ حضرت عمر رضی اللہ تعالی عنہ کی برکت سے اللہ تو ہماری مغفرت فرما دے اللہ حضرت ابوبکر صدیق کی برکت سے ہماری مغفرت فرما دے اللہ کے رسول صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی برکت سے ہماری مغفرت فرما دے اللہ تو ہم سے راضی ہو جا اللہ تو ہم سے راضی ہو جا اللہ کبھی بھی ناراض مت ہونا اللہ ہم سے کبھی بھی ناراض مت ہونا اللہ اگر ہم سے غلطی بھی ہو جائے گنا بھی ہو جائے اللہ ہمیں معاف فرما دے اللہ ہمیں معاف فرما دے و نعوذ بك من غضبك والنار و نعوذ بك من غضبك والنار اللہ جن لوگوں نے دعاؤں میں یاد رکھنے کے لیے کہا ہے ان کی دعاؤں کو قبول فرما اللہ جو پریشان حال ہے ان کی پریشانی کو دور فرما اللہ ہمارے والدین ان کے درجات کو بلند فرما اللہ ہم ان کی آنکھوں کی ٹھنڈک بنے اللہ ہماری اولاد ہماری آنکھوں کی ٹھنڈک بنے اللہ ہر ایک کی مغفرت فرما مسلمانوں کی حفاظت فرما جہاں کہیں مسلمان پریشان حال ہے اللہ ان کی پریشانی کو دور فرما خصوصاً انگلینڈ میں یوروپ میں اللہ اسلام کے دروازے کو کھول دے اللہ اسلام کے دروازے کو کھول دے اللہ ہماری مساجد مراکز مقاتب دارالعلوم مدارس ہر ہر جگہ کی حفاظت فرما اس امت کے علماء کی حفاظت فرما صلحا کی حفاظت فرما نیک لوگوں کی حفاظت فرما اللہ ہمارے برہوں کی حفاظت فرما ہمارے نوجوانوں کی حفاظت فرما مستورات کی حفاظت فرما بچوں کی حفاظت فرما اللہ ہمارا خاتمہ بالخیر ہو اللہ ہمارا خاتمہ بالخیر ہو اللہ تو ہم سے راضی ہو جا اللہ عزت دینے کے بعد ذلت سے بچا اللہ عزت دینے کے بعد ذلت سے بچا اللہ تندرستی کے بعد بیماری سے بچا اللہ تندرستی کے بعد بیماری سے بچا سبحان اللہ و بحمدہ سبحان اللہ العظیم نستغفرک و نتوب الیک سمعنا و اطوانا گفرانک ربنا و الیک المصیر برحمتک یا ارحم الراحمین